Math courses and math contests, for that matter, are often presented as just a series of questions where it's your goal to try to come up with the answers. But is mathematics, at its, at its core, really just about answering questions? Well, a lot of times, instead of being given a concrete question to answer, you're rather just given some context to explore, maybe some numerical evidence to look at. And then in light of that numerical evidence, it'll be your job to come up with interesting questions, interesting conjectures. Well, here's the result of some numerical exploration. 2 to the 5th plus 2 is 1 modulo 3. 3 to the 5th plus 3 is 1 modulo 5. 3 to the 5th plus 3 is also 1 mod 7. 2 to the 5th plus 2 is 1 modulo 11. 4 to the 5th plus 4 is 1 modulo 13. 7 to the 5th plus 7 is 1 modulo 17, and, and so on. So when you're confronted with this kind of numerical evidence, what sort of patterns do you notice? Well, I noticed that 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, these are all prime numbers. And uh, over here on the left-hand side, I've got a number to the fifth power plus that same number is congruent to 1. So one sort of common pattern that I'm seeing here is that I've got a bunch of data that fits into this sort of shape. x to the fifth plus x is congruent to 1 modulo some, some prime. Is there a conjecture that you could deduce from this? Sure. Uh, conjecture. For every prime p, there's an integer x, so that x to the fifth plus x is congruent to 1 modulo p. This is the kind of conjecture that you might think is true when you're shown numerical evidence like this. This is a bunch of examples of primes, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on, with x's, with integers, and having the property that x to the fifth plus x is congruent to 1 modulo uh, the prime. Is that conjecture true? Well, if it is true, it's not clear how we'd try to prove it. But anytime that we're given a general statement and we're trying to explore whether or not this general statement is true or false, one good idea is to take that general statement and try to think about a special case. In this situation, the general statement involves a prime p. So instead of trying to think about a prime p in general, we could think about the special case where that prime p is 2. So let's specialize the situation where p is equal to 2. So we're trying to find an integer x with the property that x to the fifth plus x is congruent to 1 modulo 2. This would be uh, the uh, statement of the conjecture in the situation where that prime p is 2. We're looking for an integer x so that x to the fifth plus x is congruent to 1 modulo 2 in this case. Well, this is really a statement uh, about whether or not something's even or odd, right, working modulo 2. So it's maybe natural to break this into cases as to whether or not x is even or odd. So let's think about the situation where x is even. And in this case, uh, x is, let's say, 0 modulo 2. x to the fifth is also even if x is even. And that means that x to the fifth plus x is an even number plus an even number, which is even. Well, that's bad news. So if x is even, it can't be that x to the fifth plus x is 1 mod 2. x to the fifth plus x is even. Okay, so let's think about the case where x is odd. Well, in this case, uh, x to the fifth is uh, also odd. And then we've got x to the fifth plus x is an odd number plus an odd number, which is necessarily even. So regardless of whether x is even or odd, x to the fifth plus x ends up being even. And that tells us that there isn't an integer with the property that x to the fifth plus x is 1 modulo 2, which means this conjecture that looks so good based on the data that we had is in fact wrong. So the conjecture as stated is, is false, right? It's not true when p is equal to 2. But that doesn't mean that we just give up. Right? Mathematics is less about answering the questions that we're given and more about having a dialogue. And what that means in this case is that instead of just throwing away our false conjecture, we should try to salvage it. Well, this conjecture as stated is, is wrong, right? I mean, we noticed that uh, when p was 2, this wasn't true because there isn't an integer so that x to the fifth plus x is 1 mod 2. 
But what I mean by salvage is that I want to fix this conjecture now in, in light of that counterexample to something that might actually be true. So I'll just uh, fix it this way. I'll avoid the counterexample by adding an extra hypothesis that avoids the situation that we knew was false. Maybe this is a true conjecture. Is it the case that for every prime p not 2, because we know that one doesn't work, but for every prime p not 2, there exists an integer x so that x to the fifth plus x is 1 modulo p? I mean, that's a question. And that's a question for you. Right? Is our salvage conjecture even true? That's for you to figure out. In the words of Glenn Stevens, first you answer the questions, then you question the answers. And that's really the spirit of what we're trying to do here, right? I don't want you just to be able to take propositions and put them in the true bucket, into the false bucket, right? Rather, I want you to be thinking of your own questions, coming up with your own conjectures, and, and ultimately making your own discoveries.